Hello students, in this video, let us learn how to prepare balance sheet by calculating the various types of ratios. Here we have a problem, prepare balance sheet from the particulars furnished here under. They have given stock velocity is nothing but stock turnover ratio which expresses the relationship between cost of goods sold and average stock that is 6 times and they have given gross profit margin 20% of sales then capital turnover ratio they have given 2 times it expresses the relationship between sales and capital employed or capital then fixed assets turnover ratio is given 4 times so it expresses the relationship between the uh, sales and fixed assets then debt collection period is given 2 months then credit as payment period is given 73 days then gross profit is given rupees 60,000 then they have stated that excess of closing stock over opening stock was rupees 5,000 which means that closing stock will be 5,000 more than the opening stock value then difference in the balance sheet represents bank balance in the sense if you get any uh, difference amount in the asset side that will be the balance of bank the entire sales and purchases are made on credit basis so clearly they have stated uh, there is no cash sales the complete sales will be on credit basis here uh, by using stock velocity ratio we can calculate opening and closing stock then by using gross profit margin we can calculate the value of sales and by using capital turnover ratio we can calculate the value of the capital then fixed assets turnover ratio can be uh, used for the purpose of calculation of total fixed assets debt collection period can be used for the purpose of calculation of debtors then creditors payment period can be used for the purpose of calculation of creditors now let us learn how to prepare balance sheet by calculating various types of ratios the first calculation we need to do is calculation of cost of goods sold so cost of goods sold can be calculated by using the gross profit ratio that is gross profit divided by sales into 100 so here we know the gross profit ratio is 20% so 20% can be write as 0.2 is equal to 60,000 is gross profit given in the problem divided by sales we don't know the value of sales here we no need to write 100 because we have converted this gross profit percentage into decimals so it will get cancelled so no need to write into 100 here so if we make cross multiplication it will be 0.2 sales is equal to 60,000 rupees therefore sales will be 60,000 divided by 0.2 it will be equals to 3 lakh rupees it is credit sales because they have clearly stated that the entire sales and purchases are made on credit basis so 3 lakh will be the complete credit sales value then uh, by using this we can calculate the cost of goods sold the cost of goods sold can be calculated COGS is equal to 3 lakh sales minus gross profit that is given in the problem 60,000 rupees because the cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit so sales is 3 lakh gross profit is 60,000 it will be equal to 2 lakh 40,000 rupees is the cost of goods sold so now let us calculate the opening and closing stock by using the stock turnover ratio here the stock velocity and stock turnover ratio are one and the same stock velocity is equal to cost of sales or cost of goods sold divided by average stock we know the value of stock velocity that is 6 times and cost of sale is nothing but cost of goods sold it is 2,40,000 divided by average stock so here in the problem they have stated that excess of closing stock over opening stock was rupees 5,000 
we don't know the value of either opening stock or closing stock let us assume opening stock as x if opening stock is x then the closing stock will be 5000 more than the opening stock so x plus 5000 here x is representing opening stock so x is opening stock x plus 5000 is closing stock because closing stock will be 5000 more than the opening stock so x plus 5000 divided by 2 so as per the mathematical calculation this division 2 will become multiplication if it comes to the numerator so therefore 2 lakh 40,000 into 2 divided by x plus x will be 2x plus 5,000. So, if we make cross multiplication, it will be 6 into 2x plus 5,000 is equal to 2,40,000 into 2 will be, will be 4,80,000. So, if you multiply 6 into 2x, it will be 12x. 6 into 5,000, it will be 30,000 is equal to 4,80,000. So, in the same way, we have to bring the common factor into the one side 12x is equal to 4 like 80,000 this uh, plus 30,000 will become minus 20 uh, 30,000 if we bring to the right hand side that is 4 like 80,000 minus 30,000 so therefore x is equal to 4 like 50,000 that is 4 like 80,000 minus 30,000 4 like 50,000 divided by 12 it will be 37,500 here x is representing uh, opening stock therefore the value of opening stock will be 37500 if value of the opening stock is 37500 the, the, then the closing stock value will be 5000 more than the opening stock that is 37500 plus 5000 it will be equals to 42500 rupees next the third calculation is calculation of capital by using capital turnover ratio they have given capital turnover ratio two times the formula will be sales divided by capital employed or capital so we know capital turnover ratio two times and sales value three lakh we have calculated here so three lakh divided by capital so if we make cross multiplication it will be two capital is equal to 3 lakh rupees therefore capital will be 3 lakh divided by 2 it will be equals to 1 lakh 50 thousand after calculating the value of capital we need to calculate the uh, fixed asset value by using fixed asset turnover ratio that is 4 times so fixed asset turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by fixed assets we know the value of fixed assets turnover ratio that is 4 times and value of stock is 3 lakh divided by fixed asset if we make cross multiplication it will be 4 fixed assets is equal to 3 lakh therefore fixed asset value is equal to 3 lakh divided by 4 it will be 75,000 after calculating the value of fixed assets we need to calculate the value of debtors so by using debtors turnover ratio here they have given debt collection period 2 months so by using this we need to calculate first debtors turnover ratio the formula is 12 months because the debtors uh, collection period debt collection period is given in the months so we have to represent in the month only so 12 divided by debt collection period so 12 months divided by debt collection period is 2 months so it you know data turnover ratio will be 6 times so after calculating data turnover ratio we need to calculate the value of data so data turnover ratio is equal to credit sales divided by data we know the data turnover ratio that is 6 times is equal to credit sale is 3 lakh divided by data if we make cross multiplication it will be 6 data is equal to 3 lakh so therefore the data is equal to 3 lakh divided by 6 that is 50,000. After calculating the value of data, we need to calculate uh, you know, uh, value of creditors by using the creditors payment period. Here they have given creditors payment, payment period in days. So we have to represent creditors turnover ratio in uh, in the form of 365 days in a year creditor turnover ratio is equal to 365 divided by 73 days it will be five times so after calculating data you know creditor turnover ratio uh, 
uh, we need to calculate uh, value of credit as that is credit as turnover ratio is equal to credit purchases divided by credit as we know the credit turnover credit as turnover ratio that is 5 times is equal to credit purchases we need to calculate because we don't know the value of credit purchases we need to calculate credit purchases first so calculation of credit purchases can uh, you know will be cost of goods sold is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock here we need to use cost of goods sold formula to calculate the value of credit purchases we know the value of cost of goods sold that is 2 lakh 40 thousand uh, that will be is equal to this sum of opening stock and uh, purchases and it has to you know uh, we need to deduct closing stock from the sum of opening stock and purchases the value of opening stock is 37500 we have calculated already purchases we don't know and we have to deduct the value of the closing stock that is 42500 which has been calculated already so therefore purchases will be 240000 minus 37500 because if we bring the, this right hand amount to the left hand it will become negative here this 37500 is representing positive so if we bring to the left hand side it will become negative minus 37500 in the same way if we bring this minus 42500 to the left hand side here it is negative and, and it will become positive that is plus 42500 so if you simplify this you will get 245000 purchases so credit purchases is 245000 divided by credit as so if we make cross multiplication it will be 5 credit as is equal to 245000 therefore the value of credit as is equal to 245000 divided by 5 that is 49000 after calculating all the types of ratios now we need to prepare balance sheet so capital we have calculated that is 150000 credit as we have calculated that is 49000 then fixed asset 75000 is calculated then closing here we need to take only closing stock in the balance sheet opening stock will not appear in the balance sheet so we have to consider only closing stock that is 42500 then debt as we have calculated that is 50000 and in the problem they have clearly stated that if any amount left out that has to be treated as the bank balance so here the balance in figure amount will be 31500 it has to be treated as cash and bank balance if we make a total the balance uh, balance sheet total will be 1,99,000 both the sides thank you